I'm here with Ann Frost from I Thought I Knew How and Ella Gordon from Ella Gordon Designs in Shetland, UK. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. We were just talking about the weather and how it's so different from Wyoming to Connecticut to Shetland. Mm-hmm. And, and we're glad it's starting to get light a little bit longer for the day. Yeah. 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 We're two, yeah it's, um, it is light by about eight o'clock in the morning now, which is good. It makes it a lot easier to get out of bed because it's quite difficult to get out of bed when you get up and it's dark and you get home when it's dark and everything. But um, yeah, today it's a bit brighter and it was light, yeah, until about quarter past five, half past five. So at six o'clock now, yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much dark. Now you're, you're at the, about the 60th parallel. Is that correct? 60 degrees north, yeah. That's yeah. Okay. And and do you know where you are? I have no idea. We'll have to Google that. I have no idea. <laughs> well, and here, you know, your phone will tell you. Your iPhone will tell you. Will it? Yes. Go to okay. like utilities and then find the compass, and then it will tell you the GPS coordinates and what parallel. Okay. Latitude. Yeah. Okay. I'm on a hunt. You go on with your story. Okay. Well, we're about forty-one and a half here. So not nearly as far north as you are there in Shetland, but yeah, it's light here. It's getting light about 645 is sunrise, I think. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to do farm chores in the dark anymore. That's always good. Yeah. Yeah. Carry buckets through the ice, you know. (laughs) Well, that's the thing. It's not really cold here. Um, Like it's not that cold. We don't usually get that much snow. I think people think because we're so far north, we get a lot of snow, but we really don't we've not had really any this winter it's just at the moment we've had quite a lot of rain and wind and that's that's well you're a coastal island so yes yeah you don't have the the cold like we do um yeah this morning was well 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 I don't know what this would be in celsius do you do celsius or fahrenheit yeah celsius Hmm. it was negative eight no it was eight degrees above zero Fahrenheit. I don't know what that would be in Celsius. Okay. So, cool. But <laughs> next week is supposed next week's supposed to be really bad. It's supposed to be negative 10 next week. Yeah. So the animals are not happy. No. Yeah. Did you figure it out, Anne? No, I don't have a utilities folder and I can't find my compass. So oh, well. we're never gonna know. We're never I could Google. <laughs> Unless that's all right. It doesn't matter that much. <laughs> I this is ask- how Jana gets me to shut up. She gives me a task that's unsolvable, <laughs> and then I just sit here quietly. <laughs> or either that, or you're doing the side eye and you're shopping when we do podcasts. <laughs> to do that too, because the people we interview should go go to their website and buy stuff from the person we're interviewing. Like while yeah. we're interviewing, <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> so your sweater is fantastic. I want to know about that. Thank you. Um. Well, this one is. Uh, vintage, it's an actual Fair Isle jumper from Fair Isle, so it has the Fair Isle label and it's just um, all over. Yeah, yeah every, motif, every motif is different and yeah, it's probably 19, maybe 1950s, 1960s probably. You, now you're, for people who don't know, Ella is well known locally there in Shetland as a collector of vintage knits. And um, I'm curious how you go about sort of deciding what era they're from as you're picking them up. Um, a lot of times, it, if they have a label, that's the kind of <laughs> easiest way to do it. But even that, um, a lot of companies, their labels maybe didn't change that much. So you could be anything within a 20, 30 year period. But it's just kind of really from over time. It's kind of how I've learned and you can sometimes tell by the colors or the patterns and and then sometimes if people think things are much older than they are because of colors and the motifs, but I think it's, you can tell more by the way the wool looks and how the garment is kind of aged. Mm-hmm. That could be another way you can kind of do it. And now I'm quite a lot more picky, I would say, than I used to be. and. I try because I have so much. I like I really do have quite a big collection. I try now to get things that are maybe a bit more different, 
are not like anything other that I have and things with labels because then I can try and date it somehow or you can at least try and find out more about it but a lot of things are just things people made and then um, things like accessories and stuff usually don't have labels anyway but some do if they were made that if they were made to to kind of sell mass produced as much as as channel network can be mass produced some of them do have labels but yeah most accessories don't so that's kind of more yeah. do you yeah, find do you find that the techniques the knitting techniques have changed over the the generations um not really i think a lot Shatlanders kind of found a way to do things or found and I would say um you know a lot of people think um fair knitting and lace knitting is very difficult and very complicated but I actually don't really think a lot of the things the steps themselves are not complicated and I would say that's because Shatlanders are quite straightforward people and we don't really do things um if you know we kind of do the easy do things a lot of the time the easiest way which for us is steaking and, and cutting up knitting because it's easier to knit than to purl. We generally don't, we like to knit in the round as much as possible and and things like that. So yeah, a lot of things um, yeah, are just made the way that they're made and the way they've always been made. Of course, there's people who do things differently or and then a lot of people obviously don't think something's gonna be dissected 30 years later by some random girl. So I <laughs> and also would never, I would never judge anybody for anything because I think I would hate the idea of people looking at something I've made and picking it apart. So I don't, I try and not do it. <laughs> Can you imagine like one of your shortcuts or something or like you, you sort of, you, you realize you did something and, and you fixed it and then have someone come along and be like, knitters in this area used to do it this way you know and you're yeah. just like oh no <laughs> I know and yeah. we're like ah just tie a knot it'll be fine <laughs> yeah that's what I'm like <laughs> well well we're really glad you joined us today we have some questions that we sent you that we thought would be appropriate for our <laughs> podcast interview but this is all I don't know how do you want to jump into this Anne well I mean Ella, you are involved in textiles up there. How did you get started with textiles? Um, well, I learned to knit in primary school, which is something that we all did um, in the 90s in Shetland. And I had absolutely no interest in it at all. Um, I wasn't very good at it. I didn't really care about it. I thought it was boring. And yeah, I was didn't really pay much attention. I grew up in the 90s in Shetland, which was not a boom time for the textile industry. It was maybe in kind of one of the lower, lower points. And then when I was about um, 15 or 16, then they started to be, fair isle hoodies started to be a thing. So like swears with hoods all over fair isle ones. And um, yeah, people just started. And then girls, a lot of girls started wearing fair isle yokes the yoke um, cardigans, they kind of came back into fashion. And I um, I went to, the, when I finished high school, I went to the Shetland College and did a one year art and design course. And they also had a textiles course. And by that, when I finished the, that course, I still didn't really want to leave Shetland. A lot of people, I mean, because of the size of the island, and if you want to go to university, you really have to leave Shetland and move away for four years. And I was just not really ready to do that. So I, um, I started the textiles course really just as a way to I to do something creative, but <clears throat> that I could do in Shetland, and I ended up loving it. And then when I was, I think in my second or third year of the course, I got a Saturday job at Jimison Smith, and yeah, up to that point, I had you know no interest really in hand knitting or anything. So that was about yeah, I started there eleven. Yeah, I worked there for eleven years now. So all of my skills, everything I've learned to do has been within that time, really. I started, I've always, um, and like for collecting, I've just, I've always shopped in charity shops and yeah. eBay and I just added, you know, Shetland knitwear because I didn't grow up really surrounded by it. I don't have, um, or I didn't have 
really much knitwear at all. And I, you know, for a way to feel close, because it is part of our culture to kind of feel closer to my culture, I started just um, buying it and also to wear it at work because it's quite mm-hmm. a cold place to work and Shell Knitwear is warm. So, yeah, that was kind of how I got into it, really. Excellent. How how did you then make the leap into designing? When did that start? Was that part of your textiles course? No, not at all. We didn't do any hand knitting. There was that was purely, I think, from working at Joseph and Smith I, that I got back into that because I think you did machine knitting and thing at, at college, and I think a lot of time, a lot of people think you what you could do on a knitting machine, you could do by hand and vice versa. It's just mm-hmm. the knitting machine is faster, but really, there's a lot of things you can't do. So I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll just start, um, I'll start hand knitting and see how that goes. And really designing was just um, the first thing, the first things I, I made, I wasn't really very precious about it. And Sandra that I worked with was like, well, let's just do it a different way or use a different color or, so it just never was, it was never really a thing to me. I just kind of did it. And then I hadn't really had too many, too many designs I was I was known for. I used to make I have one over here, I'll go and get um, these uh, little cushions in the shape of Shetland Croft houses. So these are like the kind of houses that we have, uh, traditional houses in Shetland. And um, I used to make them to sell. And these are machine knitted, I would do them. So I was quite well known. I used to sell them in craft fairs and things like that in Shetland. So, when I was asked to be the uh, patron for a week in 2016, I think. And um, then that was when I, that was really my first big part and that I designed was craft as that. And now when I think about it, the fact that my first like big design was for the wool week hat seems absolutely crazy. And I would, I don't think now I would be able to do that. But then I was just like, yeah, I'll just do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, sure, whatever. You know, you know, when you're, when you're young, you know how big it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned that you were a patron of Shetland Wool Week. How, I'm so curious about that, like how you found out if you were consulted ahead of time or if that was an, sort of an invitation and whether you felt like how you felt when you received that invitation and then and then what that was like for you to serve as the patron. Yeah, I think so. The way they used to do it, I mean, it's probably different now, um, was they asked me, um, like, would I be interested in doing it Mm -hmm. and in being patron? And I said, yeah, but I didn't think it would ever be a thing. And then they do have a committee, and then I think they did a vote, and then I won the vote for that year. So I did it. And, yeah, you... Um, well you have to design the pattern obviously and you have to teach a few classes and I don't know if you have to I I did a talk that was kind of my main thing I'm not really a teacher that's I don't really teach classes um but I do have do talks about my vintage network collection and things like that so I did it more kind of on that side mm-hmm. um and yeah I can't remember like now it's yeah, it was quite a long time ago. And but what I can't can't believe now is that I followed the babble hat because that was like went viral. That was a and, phenomenon, yeah. Yeah. And even now I yeah, now I can't imagine um following that pattern. I think I just got on with it and didn't really overthink it, which is not like me, especially now I overthink everything, but at that time I must have been a bit more <laughs> easygoing. <laughs> I like I can totally relate to that. Anne and I have long conversations where I'm overthinking things. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just was like, went with the flow. But I, I didn't feel like I was doing that at the time. But I don't. Well, I do remember I was really, really nervous um, when the pattern came out. Like I would have like nightmares for weeks oh. before about the pattern being, about there being, you know, mistakes with the pattern and everything. Because I think it doesn't matter how many times you look over things. You can. Yeah you just get blind to it because it all looks and that happens to me every time I put out a pattern but you know thousands and thousands don't get printed every time I uh, I do a pattern so yeah yeah 
So speaking of your patterns, what was your inspiration for the Hap Kel? You know, and even that, now I was um, thinking it was quite a few years ago that I did that. And I remember, I, yeah, I definitely went through a hack phase. I think mm-hmm. most challengers do. You just, it's, yeah, something that um, a lot of people make. So, and I was like, never one to, I didn't think I would ever make a big square hat. It was just not something that I really, I have a few in my collection. So it's, not something I would have ever made, but I was always quite inspired by the different elements of the pattern. Um, and yeah, I just had this idea, like what if you just took the garter stitch and then you took the kind of feather fan um, border and put it onto a cowl. Mm. Yeah, and I did it. And it was one of those things I did and I did the pattern, I pat it out and it's been one of the biggest, one of my biggest patterns. It's... Well, Anne ever- pointed it out to me and I hadn't seen it before and she pointed it out to me and I was like, that's brilliant. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and like Ella said, like the practicality of a hat doesn't really match with modern times, you know, you no. might make one, but, at, but I think normally you'd these days, you wouldn't even wear it like a shawl. You'd probably wear it around your neck, you know, bunched up anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending on how big it is, it's a good yeah. baby thing too, but yeah. a baby thing as well, a baby blanket, but the hap cowl, you get fantastic you know, the elements of it and yeah. it's much more practical for how we dress today. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a brilliant idea and it's going to be a lot of fun to make. And, you know, Anne is doing it out of the traditional Shetland, you know, Shetland wool and I'm stash diving because in my region, the availability of the Shetland wool is a little difficult at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. And just has a lot bigger stash than I do. I just come back with a suitcase full every time I go. So it's not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to use so, it. <laughs> so if people want to stash dive, you know, I want to show them that they can put together some different things with maybe some leftovers or whatever, but I think it's brilliant. Yeah. It's a brilliant pattern and it's a modernized way to wear that traditional design. And I think that's love. That's lovely. Yeah. 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 It's wonderful. So how did you decide on your color combinations? Um, I can't really remember, but I think I also, I do have the two of them here. Yeah, and lovely. I mean, it's so dark here. You probably can't really see it probably. Yeah, anyway, we, yeah. that's my favorite of the, yeah, the, that's the, really pattern, nice. in the pattern. Yeah, I mean, that is something I, like color is one of my favorite things about um, Shetland Mitten and something that because I think I work in the yarn store I am looking at every at colors every day work with them you know sur- surrounded by them and always you're always looking at different color schemes and things and I would say um yeah for this pattern I did um this was kind of like a more inspired by like the sea and the beach and that was kind of how and I can't even remember if that was how I you know, if I thought that before I did it or if I did it and then decided, and then this one was more like, um, you know, the hills and the peat and the heather and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I do remember when I was um, deciding then I did like little yarn wraps. So we used to do that quite a lot when I was at college. Right. Mm-hmm. And because, and I see people doing that with, for Fair Island stuff and I don't think that always totally works because you're you're wrapping things they might look nice next to each other but but when you're Fair Island you're actually knitting them together so it might not totally work but for this you can literally do a yarn wrap that's mm-hmm. just in the order of um of how the pattern is because right. technically you're knitting um you know flat and like in straight lines it's the pattern that's making people wavy you're not really doing right hard work yeah so you can do that um as well just a little yarn wrap to see if you like the order but honestly i don't think there's really i don't think you can really go wrong Mm -hmm. because you're only using one color at a time and um i think just as long as there's some kind of contrast it doesn't even really need to be big contrast it'll Mm -hmm. still work but it does work as well for um big contrasts too so Mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah, I think it's lovely. Yeah. I've made a lot of shawls and I tend not to wear them very much. So I'm looking, 
and and I'm I'm a process knitter. Like I I don't always wear the finished product, but I really enjoy making it. But this I can see it being both, where yeah, I will wear it as well because I struggle. I'm one of those people that struggles with the shawl, like how to wrap it up and how to do it. And like I don't have to well, second I, guess I, this. <laughs> I never wear I never wear scarves with ends and I um yeah, never wear shawl because here it's so windy, like you just you need something that just you put on and it stays on. So that was kind of my yeah. thinking. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Do you have any advice for folks as they begin this pattern? A lot of them are going to be new to lace, which is one mm -hmm. of the reasons why we picked this project because it is an easier lace at the bottom. But any, I don't know if you have any advice for, for people taking it on. Well, I really would say that it's not difficult at all because, um, I mean, if you can knit, if you can do a knit stitch, if you can do a yarn over, mm -hmm. and if you can knit two together, that's the only thing. Right. Yeah, right. right. The only things you're doing. So it's really, mm -hmm. that is very, very simple. I will never do anything more complicated than it needs to be. That's just not how I do anything. So um, it's very, uh, yeah, maybe it looks, looks harder than it is, but it's really not. Yeah. So maybe just calm down. Maybe the advice is calm down. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and it's in some. I mean, if you, you're doing it in fingering weight, you could even do it. There are people. Lots of people have made it in even thicker. You could do uh -huh. it in deep. Yeah, just go. Up, I would just go up a needle size. That would be really all you need to do. And yeah, it's not. Um, you're doing it in fingering weight, so it's it's pretty thick. It's not. Um, you know, it's not like doing a one ply chatting right. lace really the easy way that it can be yeah absolutely. yeah the only, the only thing that i would say to people that in the same way that we suggest people do this with fair isle is if you have uh stitch markers between the pattern mm -hmm. repeats and that way you can go back yeah. and make sure you haven't missed a yarn over you haven't missed a decrease as you're going along you know and i know that seems like a really huge use of stitch markers but if you are a beginner it could be helpful just so that you're double checking each section as you go along i do it with yeah. everything yeah anything i'm making i recently made the um well a version of the bear pullover which is like the cover on the, from the goodman johnson chatham trader news book and that's like um i don't know how many you'd probably have about 30 or 40 repeats of the tiny razor shell i still do it between every repeat because yeah. then you instantly know yeah if, something, off. if something's wrong if something's off you know well one thing i wanted to ask because uh we mentioned it ahead of time before the interview and i just wanted to come back and see if you had any of your uh vintage items there that you wanted to share with us yeah so I, um i don't have I have quite a lot of things um, I've all, well, I say packed away. It's not packed away. It's like just packed in a way that it doesn't take over everything. Um, but I am, I am trying, I mean, this time of year, I wear, yeah, basically something either like shell and feather pretty much every day. So I have um, just a lot of my all overs. Wow. So this again. Well, it's a very traditional one. Yeah. So it's a T&M 80, so that was a company which was in Vogue. Um, and this is very traditional colors. And yeah, I wear that one quite a lot. Um, I have another one, which is... Um, Ooh, lovely. The up and so down. This is another um, very... Well, this one is quite unusual, but these vertical panel um, jumpers. And yeah, they're just... Get classic them. i wore this one the other day it's got a big I'm trying to find it it's i can't really see it but it's been mended um on the front there was obviously a big oh. hole here it and Love but it. there's a lot of things i wear there's holes in them the this one the rib is coming away but shell goes so it doesn't want to go anywhere it's just yeah, it once it's been knitted it kind of wants to stay where it is and that's yeah. really it and I have um lots of gloves and wow oh wow 
wow. That's beautiful. Those fingers are amazing. So these are what we would call Cunningsboro gloves. It's this from like the area of Cunningsboro and Shetland, but it's these like with the double the cuffs and then the, and then pattern fingers. So these ones, yeah, are very warm. And I couldn't find, I oh, have these mittens as well, which are similar. They have the same um, fold over cuff, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, Alison Rendell does designs that still incorporate that cuff. For that cuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people do. And um, and then I found I have this Feral Tea Cozy, which I bought um not that long ago, which is one of the things that were made, they were made in Fair Isle um for them to sell to visitors and stuff. So it's kind of like a it's a tourist kind of tourist item. Mm -hmm. And it has this the Fair Isle made in Fair Isle label. So that's the same label that's in this jumper. Right. Um, so that's just, yeah, a random, but I have, yeah, I can't even tell you how many things, but someday I will um, either make my riches or I will open some kind of museum or something. I don't know. That's <laughs> Well, I was going to say, there's the, the main museum, there's the textile museum, and then there can be the Ella Gordon Museum as well. Right. I think I'm The Ella Gordon Collection. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? Maybe that'll be like be my pension. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. But is it a pension? Well, it is because I've invested. I've invested all my money yeah. in it. <laughs> now it's paying out as you yeah. open the museum. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I would come to see that. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. It's delightful to meet you. Yeah, you too. That's no problem. Wonderful. Well, hope, do you have do you have more things coming up for the new as we get into the new year? Um, not really. I'm kind of just work well, uh, working away, which is very we're very busy at the moment still. Ever since, I mean, we're busy all the time, but ever since the pandemic, yeah, things have been very busy and certainly online. Um, we're doing a lot at Jim Smith, so yeah, just working away and. I'm working on, I usually always do a pattern for the Woo Week annual and you have to be quite on the ball and, or, and organized about that. So I'm working on that at the moment. Oh. That's all top secret until... What will it be? <laughs> but I always look forward to getting that. It's so exciting when I get that in the mail from, mm -hmm. because it feels from like it's all special and it comes from so far away. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does. I mean, it's, a, you know, halfway around the world, you know? Yeah. So I always so, look forward to that. Yeah, it's a very big thing now. And yeah, so I'm just working on that. And I have some ideas, but I'm trying to just um, not put pressure on myself anymore and do things. I think for a while there, I was trying to, you know, design all the things and do all the things and be mm -hmm. all the things. And yeah, I think this past it's couple, okay. It's okay. Yeah, the yeah. past couple of years have taught me like, you don't know what's going to happen ever. So just do, do things that make you happy. And yeah, and I still love, I love seeing people making my patterns. That's really the best thing about it. Yeah. And get, and that's, you know, Instagram can be hard sometimes. And, and yeah, so, but I, that's the good part about it is I still enjoy people tagging me and things. And um, yeah. Well, that's seeing, a good question. What hashtag should we use? Hap Cal knit along. What should we use? You could do that. Yeah, I would do that or Hap Cow along. Hap Cow along. <laughs> hap Cow along. Cow is kind of like Hap Cow along. That's true. Knit along, Hap Cow along. Or whatever you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll tag you regardless. Yeah. We'll yeah. Yeah. So put on there, people can put on at Alan Gordon Designs. And that's where people can find you on Instagram. I will put yep. all the, I'll put all the links down below in the video description where people can find you and on Ravelry and Instagram and wherever else you are. Yeah, and I think if you look, when I did this pattern, I'm pretty sure, because I used to, as well, I'll do a lot more blog posts and things. And I definitely did a blog post about this. Um, oh, I'll find that, okay. When it, yeah, when it came out. And I think I have pictures on that of my little yarn wrap and. 
Okay, I'll make a note of that so I don't forget to add that link. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. That's okay. Uh, random good evening. <laughs> it's good to see you. Hopefully one day I'll make it over. Yeah, that would be good. You know, yeah. I keep trying to persuade her and she's not a traveler. We got to work on her. It's hard for me to leave. It's hard for me to leave the farm. If you yeah, if you have yeah, those kind of animals. I mean, I'll drive I'll drive places for a weekend, but I don't think I've been on a plane since 2002, you're saying? 2002. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. It's been 20 years, Jana. <laughs> See, I just can't because we can't drive anywhere. So it doesn't I can't you drive for two hours and you get to the end of Shetland. So <laughs> I was once looking at the map of Shetland and seeing how far it was from like here to there. And I'm like, I could ride a bike all over. I could ride a bicycle yeah. in the rain all over. <laughs> no, I think you think you could, but it's uh pretty looks there's a lot of people that do cycle here, and I always think when I see them, no way. It's very it's very hilly. Very hilly, yeah. Very hilly. Yeah narrow roads and a lot of wind yes. so, oh, yeah that would kind of be a bummer <laughs> some days are hard, would be much harder than others <laughs> yeah well in wyoming we have a lot of wind and snow and ice and yeah and i don't like it no i don't like it but i'll be wearing your cowl when i walk in the wind yeah that will be nice okay. <laughs> excellent all right well We'll pop in. Hopefully, you'll be watching on, you know, seeing people's project yeah, and that'll be good. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Ella.